Hi, this is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build your own timber frame and stretched canvas. I will include pricing of many of the products I use in order to give you an idea of what to expect if you decide to do this yourself. I have definitely found more affordable methods to this process, so let's begin. These are prices you might see in an art store for stretched canvas. Their 20 by 20 stretched canvas is nearly $40. Materials for my 20 by 20 canvas cost me about $2. You could get your materials from an art store, such as these stretcher bars, but the prices are still pretty high. Instead, I head to my local hardware store and pick up a 10 pack of 8 foot 2 by 2s. Grab your tape measure, pencil, and straight edge to begin working on the wood. I use my 10 inch miter saw to cut my pieces, which prices around $200. But a cheaper alternative is the miter box for $8, and I've heard of no issues working with it. Set your miter cut to 45 degrees and make your first cut. Flip your board over twice so that the angle is now facing you. Grab your tape measure and mark the desired length. Measure from the furthest point. Don't forget to take into account the width of your saw blade. To make this part a little easier, you could purchase some of these saw blades, which I haven't done, but they will help you cut more flawlessly. Grab your straight edge and mark your spot. Proceed to make your next cut. Be sure to check your work after you've cut. And this one looks good. Double check to see if it all fits together. You'll need to secure your wood piece to begin the process of beveling. Bevel the edge of the wood so that the canvas, once stretched, doesn't rest across the plane of the board. We don't want ridge marks. I've used a Ryobi planer, which I've picked up for about $70 to complete this project. There is also a non-electric $12 option you can purchase. Here's a better look at the beveled edge after I was completed with my cut. You'll then begin to want to drill through the center of your 45 degree angle cut. Next, take your screw while holding the pieces together and drill it in. I used these screws to complete that project. Another tip to save money, keep the lookout for free wood. I got this wood off someone who was remodeling their deck. And it still looks really good on the inside. You might just have to do a little bit of sanding work. But those reclaimed pieces can sure look good even standing alone. Alright, let's get to stretching. Grab your staple gun, scissors, and canvas. But let's talk about canvas, because some of this stuff can be really expensive. Even on this listing, $46 was the cheapest price I saw for only 3 yards at 56 inches. But I have a solution for this. Once again, head on over to your hardware store and find some of this painter's canvas drop cloth. It was only $32 for 173 square feet. That adds up to about 19 square yards. Local art stores in my area were selling unprimed canvas cloth for $10 a yard, but I'm getting 19 yards for $32. That's a pretty good deal. With that canvas, I have laid my frame on top and have begun to cut around with enough space to fold over. I use these heavy duty staples more often, but there are other options that I sometimes use. Before stapling, make sure your beveled edge is facing down. Fold your canvas over and punch two or three staples into the middle. 
Move on to the opposite side, fold your canvas over, and punch two or three staples into the middle of the board. Now, do the exact same thing on the other sides. Continue working in this manner until you reach the corners. Watch closely as I demonstrate how to do the corners in this video. Simply remove any excess canvas after you're done. This 26 by 26 canvas looks really good. Put your canvas on some elevated boards to begin the gessoing process. Then, begin to apply the gesso. In this video, I'm using a roller, but I sometimes use a brush as well. Keep in mind that you'll need to do at least two coats of this gesso. And don't forget to also apply the gesso to the sides of the canvas. Once your two to three coats of gesso have dried on your canvas, you can choose between a variety of sandpaper grit. These will allow you to control the type of surface you would like for your canvas. And this is pretty much your last step in the process of building your canvas. Thank you for watching and I hope this was helpful. I'm really happy with how this canvas turned out. It looks just really great. And um, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, Please hit that subscribe button and I will definitely be putting more videos out here on my channel, including time-lapse videos of my own art. Thank you and happy painting.